At this point, we're done with the user model, at least for, for a bit, uh, because we do have an industrial strength uh, password machinery under the hood. So let's commit this. And the next thing to do is to move on to making uh, a better user view, a, a user show page, which we're also calling the user profile page. Let's take a look at where we left off with the user show page. So first of all, let's look at the user controller, sorry, users controller. So we've got a new action and a show action. In fact, these are not in the standard order, so I'm just gonna move this, this guy up. So these correspond to the uh, the profile page, this is the show action, and the, uh, the sign up page. Let's take a look at the routes file. Remember, both of these routes, these, uh, the, the, the show action and the new action, uh, come to us for free when we use resources users. And then we also have a sign up URL that comes from this custom match here. Let's take a look at the, at the page again. We, we actually already visited it. So this is slash users slash one. And this uh, is a get request for the uh, URL slash user slash one, and it gets routed to the show action in the user's controller by, by this line, resources users. And then we find the user using the params of ID, which you can see here in this debug information. Now in this section, we're going to be uh, changing this page, but since we don't have any tests yet, uh, it's a good idea to write some tests for this page first uh, before moving on, so let's do that. Here is the user's controller spec, and I'm gonna make a minor change here just to go with uh, my preferred notation. The default specs use strings here, but I actually like to use symbols. Let's just uh, save it to make sure we're still green. Good. So we've got a, a block here for get new. Let's do a new block for get show. Now in analogy with uh, get new, we'd like to get show. So let's say it should be successful. Get show response dot should be success, but there's something wrong with this. What's wrong with this is that, well, let's see, let's see what, the, uh, what, what the error message says. I'm actually curious myself. Yes, no route matches controller users action show, but don't we get that in our routes file? Well, no, because remember that in order to get to the user's show page, we actually need to pass it an ID. It's slash users slash one. So in the test here, what we need to do is pass an ID, which is the ID of some user, and we don't have a user right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this broken for now uh, because we're gonna solve this problem by uh, creating users in our test database uh, using a, a nice method called factories. Uh, we could use something like user.createBang in, uh, in this controller, but it's more convenient to uh, predefine the attributes, and uh, for a variety of reasons, factories are, uh, are very flexible and convenient. The factory that I'm going to use is something called Factory Girl, which incidentally is a reference to a movie name. So let's take a look at how to do this. We need to open up our gem file. And in the test group, we need to include a gem, which is Factory Girl Rails. So Factory Girl is a, a library written by um, ThoughtBot, which is a top, uh, development firm in Boston, and I think they actually have some offices elsewhere, but in any case, they make good software, including Factory Girl. So let's uh, save our gem file, and now bundle install. And now we're ready to define our factories, so let's uh, take a look at how to do that. The, the way to define factories in such a way that they'll be automatically loaded uh, in our tests is to just make it a file called factories.rb inside the spec directory. So let's do that. So here's the spec directory. And here I'm gonna add a file called factories.rb. And this is just the, the 
syntax for factory girl. You can look it up in the factory girl documentation. Of course, this is covered in the book. So let's do factory dot define. And now we're going to define a user. And factory girl infers from the use of this user symbol that we want to create a user class. So this is a block that takes one argument, or one variable rather. And I'm going to say user dot name is uh, say Michael, I'm just going to space out here. Actually, I'm going to go down to the last one. User dot password confirmation. I like to line them up vertically. You'll see how this works. So this user has a password confirmation. It also has a password. And the password is, of course, foobar. User dot email is, let's just do mhartle at example.com at example.com and here we've got the name which is my name and what this will do is automatically insert a user with these attributes um, into the database uh, when the tests run and we'll see throughout the rest of this tutorial all the cool uh, tools that factory goal uh, adds to uh, to our testing uh, toolkit uh, among other things, you can define a sequence of emails, for example, that lets you define a whole bunch of uh, users, each with a different email. So it's a lot better than doing user.createBang um, in the user's controller spec. So now that we've got a factory defined, let's go back to our user's controller spec. And in get show, I'm going to do a before each block, because we're actually going to have a second test here in a second. So I'm going to pull a, a user, out, or I'm going to create a user in the database using factory girl, factory and then just give it a symbol. You can actually pass it a hash with um, initialization values, but by default it uses the ones here. Okay, we're, st we're still red, of course, because uh, we haven't passed an ID here, so let's pass an ID. And you can actually do at user.id, just do that and get green. Oh, we're still red, let's take a look at it. Ah, undefined method show for action controller test response. Ah, so that's true. There was a mistake there. I hope you, hope you caught that. Response dot should be success. And there we go. So before, it was failing on this line because there was no uh, ID. So th there was no route um, corresponding to get show. <laughs> but uh, in fact, there was another error there all along. And, and so I just want to show you that you actually don't need this dot ID. Of course, this pulls the ID um, out of the object. But you can uh, pass just the user. Uh, Rails is quite permissive in this, and so it's often convenient just to use the full object, and Rails knows to call .id on this uh, at user object. So let's rerun the whole test suite just to make sure we're green. Good. And now if we look at the user's controller, we see that in the show action, we're actually pulling a particular user out of the database corresponding to, to the, uh, the ID here in, the, uh, in this get. And so what we would like is a, another test to make sure that, in fact, we're pulling out um, the proper user. In fact, if you comment this line out, you'll see that we're still passing. What we would like is a test that will fail if, uh, if we don't pull the right user out. So let's do that. It should find the right user. So I'm going to get show ID is at user. And now I'm going to use a method called assigns. So this is assigns. And then I give it a symbol. And what this does is it reaches into the user's controller in, in the context of the test. And assigns of the symbol user is the value of the instance variable at user. So if there's an instance variable called at user, assigns of user will be that user. And so this user should be equal to, in the sense of a double equals, uh, the factory user, which is just at user. So let's save this and see where we are. So we're red, which isn't too surprising. You can see what, what the error is. So here's one of the errors, undefined method email for nil, nil class. So what's going on here is if we look at, uh, at the show page, let's look at the user show page. So at user.name, at user.email, what's happening here is at user is, uh, is nil, and so when we call email on a nil object, we get this error, undefined method email for nil. So the way to fix this uh, is uh, the same way to, to get uh, this to pass, the assigns user equal at user. 
uh, which is to uncomment this line. So let's uncomment this line, and we should be green at this point. Now I should mention that uh, there's a second technique uh, that uh, many people use, especially when they're uh, using RSpec, uh, to test for this kind of thing, which is to use what's called a, a stub. And uh, I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. It's covered in the Ruby on Rails 2.3 tutorial book. But after having some more experience with stubbing and a, a related technique called uh, message expectations, I've concluded that uh, this method using the assigns user um, is simpler. And there are several other places where uh, we're, we're using non-stub techniques uh, really simplify the code. So if you're interested in, in that technique, go ahead and, and read the uh, Rails 2.3 tutorial book. But for now, we're going to stick with this, uh, with this method. Um, now that we've got some tests written, uh, we're going to take the next steps toward uh, actually making a user profile page that matches this mock-up that we saw before uh, with uh, the avatar image, the name, and then a sidebar uh, with some information about the user. So let's uh, get started on that. Oh, but first we should make a commit here. We've made some changes. Let's do uh, fact added factories, added uh, a user factory, and tests for the show page. Okay, now let's take a look at its show. And instead of this uh, very simple code, I'm going to add something a little bit more complicated. But it's not too complicated. Let's take a look at this. In fact, I'm just going to get rid of the user.email, which we won't be exposing uh, to, uh, to users in general. And I'm going to put an h1 here with the user name in the middle. Let's take a look at, at that. So that's a lot better. We've got an h1 here. And you might notice here at the top, we've got Ruby on Rails tutorial sample app. That's the, the default title from our title helper. Let's change that to a custom title. It should have the right title. So what do we want the title to be? Uh, let's just make it the actual name of the user, along with the base title, of course. So let's do response. That should have selector title, and then we want uh, at user dot name. Remember, it's content. Let's see if this passes. It, it really shouldn't. <laughs> Good. And remember, the way we do this is just with an at title variable. So let's do that. At user dot name. Now we're green, and we can reload this. And so you can see now the name appears in the title. And now if you have some experience with web development, you might be concerned at this point uh, about just inserting a user's name into a, a template, because it's potentially uh, dangerous if the user were to use, a, say, a JavaScript in his name. This would open us up to what's called a cross-site scripting attack. And the typical way to handle this is to escape out any HTML. Uh, let's let's add some raw HTML to this just to show how that works. There's a script tag, uh, and you'll see that it actually is just fine because if you reload this, you can see you can see here at the top. In fact, instead of putting the script in like a JavaScript, it's actually just use, putting in the raw uh, less than sign script greater than sign. And the reason for that is that in Rails three, HTML is escaped by default. Um, if you want it not to be escaped, then you have to uh, put in an, an extra uh, method. So in fact, let's take a look at that. Let's go to show, to user.name plus script. So this is, this is uh, just showing us the, act the script escaped out. In fact, let's look at the, at the source of this. You can see here that it's doing ampersand LT semicolon. That's the HTML for a less than sign. LT is less than, and here is greater than. And if you want it actually to put the script in there, you can use the raw function. So now you can see it actually is putting the script in here. 
this would be bad, <laughs> potentially, if someone put in a malicious script. I'm going to reload this and see. It disappears because it's now being interpreted as an HTML tag and it's not being escaped out. So let's undo this. This is the correct design choice, by the way, I believe. You should escape things by default and have to override it. They should have put that in, like, Rails 0 0.9 should have had that. But in any case, they fixed it now, and it, it, I'm very pleased about it. All right, now I'm going to add a test for the, the right h1. Let's say it should um, have the user's name. Say get show id at user, and say response dot should have selector. Now it's going to be an h1, sorry, h1 with content of at user dot name. This should pass. So I want to get this to fail temporarily. Now remember that auto test will not run if I just save the, the view. So I have to go back to the uh, to the user's controller spec. Because I did, hadn't tested that h1, I want to uh, get it to red and then make sure that it's really working. So this test is actually testing the right thing. Good. So now we're green. And now I'm, I'm going to add a test for uh, the, uh, the image that we're going to use as the, uh, the avatar. We're going to be using uh, something called a Gravatar, which is a globally recognized avatar. Um, Gravatar is, is run by Automatic, which uh, is the company that makes WordPress. Gravatar started as a project by uh, Tom Preston Werner, who's now one of the founders of GitHub. It should have a profile image. By the way, you might wonder why I'm not putting this get show ID user in the before each block. And the reason is I found that as soon as you do that, you're going to want to do something before the, the get show in one of the tests. So um, you can go ahead and do that, and you'll discover, as I did, that you actually don't want to do that usually. So let's see, response that should have selector. And now I'm going to say inside that h1, in addition to having uh, the content user.name, I want to have an image tag with class Gravatar. So the way you do that is with h1, and then to show that it, that the image tag is inside the h1, I'm going to use the greater than sign, and then the name of the image tag. And then this is class Gravatar. Of course, this should fail, because we don't actually have such a thing. Good. Now, in order to get that Gravatar to work, uh, we need to add another gem. So let's Let's do that. We can open up our gem file here. This is in uh, just the general part of the file. I'm going to do gem. It's called Gravatar image tag. And I just found this by Googling around. And it's a 0.1.0. Go here, bundle install. Any of these gems, you can just go to Google and type the name. And the chances are you'll find their home page or their GitHub page. And then you can read all about them. And in this case, the way to include a Gravatar image is uh, very simple. There's just a, a method called Gravatar image tag provided by that gem. So let's go there. Let's do this. We want the Gravatar to the left of the, of the username. And the way Gravatars work is they, uh, they take in the email address. And then the email address is associated with a particular image. So we see that we're still red. And the reason for that is because Gravatar image tag isn't included yet. So when this sort of thing happens, one likely problem is that you need to restart the server, which probably means I need to, re need to restart Spork too. Let's do that. Here's the server. Let's take a look at this. And there we go. And so you can see here, this is the default Gravatar image. Let's go back and make sure that our test suite is green. Actually, it won't be green because uh, I don't think we have the right class yet. So let's do this. Right. So it's red because the uh, this Gravatar this Gravatar image tag method here uh, doesn't use the right class. And uh, the reason that I put in the class is because I want to be able to style that Gravatar. And so what we're going to do here is make a helper that lets us. Uh, put in some, some options, including the class.
See, we can get this to pass right now. Let's take a look at this. We can pass in a class here. Let's get to green. Okay, so now we're green. Now let's make a helper. So this is nice. Now we're actually uh, now we're actually able to refactor. So let's put this in the uh, the users helper. Let's take a look at this. This is an app helpers users helper because this is a helper that's specific to users. So let's let's call this method gravatar for, and it will take a user as an argument. And all it's going to do is just call gravatar image tag. with the user email. And it turns out that uh, the Gravatar is case sensitive. Um, a reader pointed this out to me. So we can use the down case method, which is just the opposite of up case. Let's take a look at that in the console. If you do foobar.downcase, it just puts it in all lowercase. So what that means is if we do So this is a useful addition. Just for safety, we can downcase it. And we're going to put in some uh, some arguments here. We're going to give it an alt attribute. Every image should have an alt attribute. We've mentioned this briefly before, but this is what a screen reader will see. Anything that can't render the image will have the alt. And we'll just make the alt the username. And then we'll give it the class Gravatar. And it turns out that Gravatar image tag takes another hash option called Gravatar. And it's just the, an options hash. And what that means is we need to add an options hash here. And we're going to give the options hash a default value for the size, size of 50. So this is a common convention in, in Rails methods, which is to have the last uh, argument be a hash. And by set it, having an equal sign and then a hash here, we're able to give it a default value. And now gravatars are square, so they're uniquely determined by a single number, in this case, 50 pixels on a side. Um, this allows us to pass extra options, though. Uh, we can pass lots of different options to gravatar image tag, which you can learn about by uh, going to the API for, th for this, uh, this gem. So let's go back to the, the show page and change this to gravatar4 at user. It's nice and compact. Note that I've omitted the parentheses here. This is just one of the things oftentimes in Vue, if you leave off parentheses, um, you'll have to develop your own style. But when defining methods, I always, always, always use parentheses. And inside of these methods, anytime it's pure Ruby, um, I'll always use parentheses in this context. See how this works. Let's lose focus here and see if we pass. Good, we're still green. We can take a look at this. In fact, this will be a little smaller, probably it'll be there it goes. Now it's 50 by 50 on a side. Now you'll note that this is the default Gravatar image tag, uh, but the way Gravatars work is that they're associated with email addresses. So let's go take a look at the console and see what this user is. So I'm going to get get out of it and uh, load it not in a sandbox. Just look at the first user. So the first user's email is mhartle at example.com. That's not a real email address, so let's update this user. You might note, by the way, that this user doesn't have a salt, and that's fine because we're going to clobber this user in the next chapter. <laughs> User.first.updateAttributes. And let's do email is a real email address. This is example at railstutorial.org. And we do have to pass the password in. and then password confirmation. There we go. And so let's, let's go reload this page and see what happens. Look at that. So I have associated this uh, image with the email address example at uh, railstutorial.org. And so what that means is that if you do this yourself, you should get the exact same image. This is out there on the wider web at, uh, at the Gravatar page. Before leaving this, I just want to show you quickly how to, uh, to pass an option. So we're, I'm going to give an options hash to this Gravatar4 method to show you. Gravatar4 at user, and then let's say size 
is 100. Yeah, so what this is doing is it's being, it's passing size as 100 to the gravatar for uh, helper, and it's overriding this, this one here, and when it gets this options variable gets passed to the gravatar image tag with this gravatar key, um, it's, uh, it's changing the, the size of this image. Let's go back to, what our, to our default size. And let's make a commit that we've made these changes. At this point, we're almost done with our first cut of this uh, this new uh, user show page. But before we leave it, I want to add the uh, the sidebar that I promised in the in the first part of this lesson when we looked at the mockup. So let's take a look at the show page here. Here we are. Now I'm going to use uh, tables for layout, and all of the the uh, HTML CSS purists out there hate this, but it's so much easier, especially for a tutorial like this that is not primarily about web design. Um, I prefer to have it be easy and understandable because we're focusing on the development part. But you should feel free to go out there and find a course on web design that tells you how to do this without tables. Frankly, for this purpose, tables are probably fine, but to each his own. So I'm going to have a table here, and I'm going to give it a class. It's a good, uh, good practice to give uh, classes or IDs to pretty much everything. Actually, I should probably give these IDs, but I'm going to be lazy for now. And this is, I just found out about this recently. You're supposed to give a table a summary, so I'm going to say this is profile information. I'm going to have inside this table a, uh, a row, a table row, and a table data cell, which is not actually table data. That's why people, the purists, hate this. This is the main TD, and I'm just going to put the H1 in there. I tried to do this with uh, HTML and CSS, and I gave. This is what always happens: you, you try it, and you spend like four hours on it, and then you give up and use tables. So I gave up and used tables for the tutorial. Let's make another TD here, and I'm going to say that this is a sidebar class, and it's also going to be round. Remember, we've created a, a rule for rounding things in our custom.css file. And uh, if you just put a space between classes, you can give this element both classes. So let's take a look at this. And I'm going to just put this in a strong tag. This is essentially boldface. I'm going to put in the name and have that be a link to the user's name. I'm sorry, just, it's going to be just the name. I am going to put a link to something over here. Now I'm going to use the break tag. This is a self-closing tag. That's what br and then slash closing uh, greater than sign. I'm going to do strong URL. So what I want this to be is a link to the current page. It says URL for the current page. The idea is that maybe you could uh, copy the link and send it to a friend and say, here's my profile. So here's link to. Let's do this a really ugly way. Let's do slash users slash and then the ID. So let's interpolate at user.id. And this is actually not only the link text, but also the URL. Remember, the link to takes link text and then the URL. Let's take a look at this. OK, so, so this worked. But this is not how you would normally do this. So let's take a look at, uh, at how you do this in real life. If you look at the routes file, this resources users, remember, sets up a table of HTTP requests, uh, URLs, and actions. So let's review that. So you see this table has get slash users index, get slash users slash one show, which we've seen before. But now this table also has a named route. So this, uh, this one line, this resources users, actually gives us not only that table, but it also gives us a bunch of named routes. So what does that mean exactly? What that means is that user path of one is the, the path to show the user with ID one. And so we can do this, and here we can do user path 
of at user, and the same thing here. As I mentioned before, uh, Rails often doesn't require the ID. It, you can get away with putting the whole object in, and Rails knows to call the ID attribute on that user. So you can see that this worked. So before we move on, I want to write a quick test for this, because I'm actually going to make one more change. Let's go to the user's controller spec and say it should have a URL, or have the right URL. And then I'm going to say the response should have selector. And now we're inside of the TD, we're going to have an A. We can take a look at the structure here. Inside of the TD here, we're going to have a link. The link to will make uh, an anchor tag, which is A. And the content will be the user path of that user. And we can actually test the href, too. This will, the, the href of the A will be user path of that user as well. So we can save this. And we should be green at this point. Good. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I'm going to refactor a little bit here. It turns out that with, when you uh, put in the link text here, remember, this is what actually goes in the link. Uh, we need to say user path of that user. But in the, the actual href, we can just leave off user path. Rails knows that if we put a user object there, that what we want is the user path to that user. So I'm going to save that and then rerun the test. And we should still be green. The idea is that we're refactoring now, and that's why it's nice to have a test. And there we go. Eight examples passed. So let's take a look at uh, the full test suite. Just double check. Good. And you know, just as a sanity check, we can reload the page and see that it still works. And of course, if we click on it, it just goes to the same page that we're already on. The idea, though, is that you can like, do this and then say copy link location and maybe send it to somebody. OK, so that's pretty much the end of this, uh, of this section and, indeed, the end of the lesson. Uh, but there's one more thing I want to do, which is to make some custom CSS rules to make this look a little bit better. So custom.css, just a reminder where this is. This is in public style sheets, custom.css. So this is going to be for the user show page. And you can take a look at the class as profile. So let's do that. Remember in CSS, it's a dot profile. So this is a table. I can do table dot profile. I just get these rules by trial and error. FFC is, uh, this is RGB. So we'll see what, that, what color that is. See if you can guess what color that's going to be. Inside the profile class, the image dot gravatar. Now I'm going to put some styling on the, the gravatar. So this is why we put a gravatar class on it. And margins can be negative. It's kind of nice. Let's take a look at the page. And there we go. It looks a little nicer. Notice we've got yellow here. That's, that's what that uh, FFC was. And uh, it's, it's also rounded. So that's uh, because of the round class that we defined earlier. And we've got a little border on the gravatar and so on. So at this point, we're ready to commit these changes and then uh, merge them back into the master branch. So let's do that. Get commit dash M and say, um, added a sidebar and some styling. And now we check out the master branch and merge in uh, our branch, git merge modeling users. It's good. Now, it's always a good idea to run the test suite just for 
tan for sanity's sake. Here we go, and now let's do git push. This will push up to GitHub. And we can do git push Heroku and take a look at the, the live site. And now we can do Heroku open. And here's our sample app. Let's go to slash user slash one. It's the show page we were just working on. And it says, we're sorry, but something went wrong. So we, we've seen this thing before. Let's, let's take a look at a, another way to diagnose this. Let's go to Heroku logs. So here are the Heroku logs. And so we can see that something is nil that we didn't want to be nil. And the reason for that is, is that uh, Heroku, as happened once before, does not have our data model. So we need to do Heroku rake db migrate. Now this still won't work because we don't have a user on Heroku, but we can fix that by running the console. So let's do that. Heroku console. And now let's do user.create bang name There we go, it created the user. Notice it set the encrypted password and the salt. That's a good sign. And let's go over here and see if it worked. And there we go. Running on the live web, we have our example user with the URL here and all of the stuff that we did uh, locally, uh, now running in production. And you notice that there, the difference here. Remember, we arranged for this debug information not to show up in production, and indeed, that's now working. So that's nice. Now, of course, we don't, in general, want to have to create users at the console, whether locally in development or on Heroku. Uh, so the next step is the, the, the obvious next step, which is to make an actual sign-up page for uh, users to join the application. So that will be on this page, and that, that will be our chief occupation in the next lesson.